Hello, welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with charcoal. Thanks for being here and, and drawing with me. Um, the white charcoal is on the black paper easy to do. It's easy to erase, it's easy to change, uh, and once you commit yourself to really grinding it in to the surface, it really gives you the contrast that you need to make that pop. So the first thing we need to do is just establish our size. We need to figure out where this is all going. So when we look at the entire sheet of paper, we want that edge to touch over here. So you make yourself a little mark and say, this is where I want this cheek to go or that zygomatic bone. And the cranium, I want to be almost to the top, not quite. Got right in there. And the chin, let's leave ourselves a little bit more space on the bottom. Uh, usually leaving a little more space on the bottom creates kind of a visual weight. And so good good composition. Maybe put his, his chin about right in there. That establishes the size of where we're going with it and what we need to do. That back part of his head, we may want to run off that page just a little bit even which means that I might not get up that high into his, his head. It might be over there some. Look at the slant between his zygomatic bone, the cheekbone, and his cranium. You can kind of come in, you can just throw in that slant real, real quick and just go, okay, that's about where that goes. Curves up into his head. And just just kind of use simple shapes. Start out fairly simply. I'm going to have to put more space in the bottom than I thought I was going to. A little more on the top. Because he's, he's kind of square. Right in the middle of that area is his nose. That nasal. Kind of a triangular shape. And you kind of throw that in. Don't be exactly triangular. But be very light too. Because any of this can be erased. With Halloween coming up. Drawing skulls, you know, that's kind of kind of important. Plus, if you're doing the human form, it's always good to draw bone structure. I know when I was in school, I had a class called Anatomy for Artists. And the first thing we did was skeletons. I had to draw a series of bones, starting with the backbone, moving on into the skull and the ribs and the, finally the little appendages. So I'm just blocking things in, trying to give them the shape that I want them, the position that I want them in. I'm trying to line up things, like for example, if you line up the front has that angle and you go back to the back angle and that will line up with your, your jawbone your mandible so the eye and the mandible line up together see how that works so you can say well if that's where the eye is that the jaw has to be lined up with it which forces me to curve it out just a little bit it almost lines up with the zygomatic bone your cheekbone, your, your jaw does almost, not quite. Learning to see all those tangents, how things kind of move together, 
or line up with one another. It's all proportionate, and it's a good skill to get. Not just for art, by the way. So a lot of this stuff I'm going to do with my cotton swab. Because it's very light and thin. So I'm going to concentrate on the lightest areas. So things, I'm going to just start with the ridge of the eye. And if it's dark, if there's something dark about it, just leave it out. Now I'm just doing those light edges. There's little crags in the in the bone. Try to leave it out. There's like little cracks down the cheek. Little areas where the uh, arteries that come out of your bone. So you're going to have little holes here and there. Like right in your jawline, you see these little holes. And so you just leave them out. And some of that area that is really kind of light gray, you just can say to yourself, well, I'm going to bring my cotton swab in. I'm going to bring this white into it. So you can leave that out too. Just do the lightest areas that you see. Anything that's dark, leave it out. going to be a point where we have to do some figure studies anyway. This is a good introduction, a little start to figure studies. There were quite a few artists in that period of time, the Renaissance or the Proto-Renaissance, that drew skulls in their artwork. And skulls became kind of a symbol of, of life as well as, as death. It's kind of represented people's existence. So they would use them very symbolically in their artwork. So a lot of that stuff that's down in there is so light and so thin, I'm going to just use my cotton swab there. As soon as I can load on some charcoal on that cotton swab, it will be easy enough to do. And it'll smooth out some of the light that I've already put in here. You want to concentrate on the lightest areas. Trying to get the teeth where they're supposed to go. Um, the easiest thing for me, at least, is I follow this little this little light area that comes off of the bridge of the nose there, or off the the nose. That's that's part of the thing that makes that little septum or that that's your septum, and it comes down into your your philtrum, that little divot that's above your lip. And so if you come straight off of that and say, okay, that's the middle of that too. You come in and kind of make that the middle of that too. And that'll help guide where all your other teeth go.
Anybody in here want to be a dentist? I have a son in dental school. He was quite a good artist. But he told me how important art became as he's making teeth. He has to be very symmetrical and he has to see all the subtle differences and changes and and they're tiny, minute details. You want to be a dentist? No. Yeah. Practice your art. I love this white charcoal because it's so easy to erase. You get most of it. You don't get it all. It's so much better than black. Interesting, he went in for an interview to see if he'd be accepted to the school and they handed him a bar of soap and said sculpt something out of this. That was their interview. I thought that was kind of interesting. Oh heavens, there's little places here that I have no idea where they're going. I think I'll just throw in some little bits of light and then I'll I'll figure it out with my cotton swab. And I really haven't grounded into the surface yet. It's it's, it's light. Some of it I've added a little bit of pressure, but when I do, that really commits it. That's probably one of the last things I do because I want that contrast in there as bright as I can get it. So like this little area here, I've put some pressure to it. I'm just going to smooth a little out and then add some more to it. But I, I want to get some of that white on my cotton swab so I can draw with that. I'm just going to start smoothing things out, see if I can't pick up some of that charcoal on my cotton swab because once I do I can start going back into my other areas that are a little lighter putting some of that in there and I can start manipulating that white charcoal around too kind of like like paint and just go into it and just pull some here and some there and And start moving it around. And if you pull out too much, your kneaded eraser, you can just touch it and your kneaded eraser will I'll bring it back. So like right here, I'm going to purposely put in too much. I think, oh, that's just too much. I needed some dark in there. I'll just take my kneaded eraser. I'll just touch that. And bring it back out. Try not to, to go, you know, try not to count on that because it's never going to come exactly black to where it was. But it will help. That cotton swab will really blend things and thin out the value. So you get some grays in there. Although it will take out your highlights. So you think to yourself, huh? Oh, I had that really light. I had that as light as I wanted it. Gotta go back into it. But it'll make it pop. So like, like all this area down the bridge of his nose on this side, reflected light, very light. 
And so I still need that area to really pop. So I've got to go back into it, make it pop. Some of that texture too, that is like in the bone, you can use your cotton swab to get that texture. You can just like pull it out and just kind of, just very light. And some of those really light, light grays or the, the darker grays. Now I'll be done with your cotton swab. So once you get to that point, and you've, you've got your enough lights in there, and you want to pull out some of those darks, just little edges. Sometimes those little grain kind of feel that you get with the bone Use your kneaded eraser to pull that out. And then you just go back in with your white. The last thing you're going to do, make those highlights pop. Give it some, some pressure and, and make that highlight really pop. And that is what's going to make that really look good. And you can even use that texture to get some of those little bony, that little bony texture that's in there. This is good exercise in teaching you how to see all those negative or positive spaces that we usually skip over because we're so bent on drawing the shadows. I remember doing this to begin with, thinking how difficult it was to ignore the shadows and just draw the light. So if you're having a difficult time, I remember how that was. Just persevere through it and it will happen for you. All of a sudden you'll just stop seeing them and you'll go, oh yeah, okay. It'll happen. Just gotta persevere through it. Here I'm getting that texture of the bone. The bone is not totally smooth. It's got kind of a little um, ripple or a little ridge to it. So I'm using my highlights, just zigzagging or scribbling through those to get that ridgy kind of a look. A little. And then I can come back into it and blend it. And if it's a little more ridgy or if there's a little more holes in there, I can touch that with my kneaded eraser and pull out some of that darkness. Remember, we're just giving the illusion texture.
more white you get on that cotton swab, the faster, easier it is going to be to draw with it. I'm trying to get as much as I can because all the stuff on the back side you can just do with your cotton swab. You can just go in there and grab some of that and just use your cotton swab. There. You can even use a piece of tracing paper if you wanted to and just scribble on some white and then use that, grab some of that out there and use that for your reflected lights that are back in there as well. So if you're not picking up enough off of the light areas that you've already drawn in. Take a piece of tracing paper and just pull some of that out. That makes it a lot easier. There's a huge amount of space that you can cover with that. In just one little stroke. And then some of those little tiny areas that just throw those in with your cotton swab nice texture to it, very smooth. I should try one where we start out this way with the cotton swab and then just add, add your highlights. He's got all his teeth. Hopefully, when I'm that old, I've got all my teeth. You can use little circles if you want and just let the grain of the paper kind of come through to create that kind of bony texture. Some of those little teeth that you can hardly see. I did those with my cotton swab and then I'm just going to come in with my kneaded eraser and just sharpen in the little edges. Take out some of the little areas that I can't can't see, don't know what's going on in there. But you just need a little bit just to tell your viewer that's where they are. Kind of fun to draw with your kneaded eraser. I'm just taking my, my cotton swab too and I'm rolling it between my fingers back and forth, just creating some of that texture that's in there. Because it's you're gonna get a little lighter, a little darker as you roll it through. Get more charcoal or less. That'll give it that kind of a textural kind of a feel to it as well. There's a lot of that little bumpy bony texture that's in there. I don't see some of these edges, but I do see a little bit of light in there, so I'm just going to throw those in and let the edges take care of themselves. If it's, if it's that dark back in there, good. Let it stay that way. Last thing you want to do is just make sure those highlights are bright enough. Sometimes if you're if you're rubbing them with your cotton swab, you take out a lot of the brightness. 
we gotta go back into it and hit those highlights. Add a little bit of pressure to it, make sure they're bright enough. Because it's that contrast that's going to make your drawing that much better. A bunch of little textures up there in the bridge of the nose that I kind of neglected to put in there. I'm just going to take my kneaded eraser and just go in and pull out a couple of them. And that, that's kind of fun. That negative drawing where you kind of pull things out. Fun. Not that it has to be exact, but you want it close enough that it that you're happy with it. Nothing is ever perfect. I think people get when they're looking at your drawing, they get kind of lost in the texture. Remember, the more you keep your viewer in your artwork the more successful you'll be that texture I'm just gonna I'm rolling between my fingers the q-tip back and forth and it's just putting in that texture for me. We need an eraser, get some of those darks back in there. Help sharpen the edges too. Sharp edges tend to be more detail oriented. Make it look a little more in focus, if you will. I like the fact too that you don't see the bottom of the skull, it's just lost or the back of it is lost. There's no no lights, nothing there to tell you where that back edge is. So as I, I kind of feel like I'm getting close to being finished with this, I want to uh, make sure that all my lights are correct. Because that's, that's the thing that's going to Make or break your piece. So look at your highlights. If they're not enough, go back in and add some more until they are. And then what do you do? What's the last thing you do? That's exactly right. You gotta sign it. Is that your copyright? And your signature is also part of your your composition and so you got to kind of figure out where to put it you don't want it right right on the edge you want it up into it you want it to be part of your artwork not exactly sure where to put this one but I'm just going to stick it back here by the end of the skull kind of small and don't want it too much there but thanks for coming along with me today on this little little drawing journey because art makes life better. The more art you do, the better your life will be. Number one, because you enjoy doing it. Number two, other people enjoy looking at it. Hope you all have a lovely day. And keep trying.